Today we're talking about symptoms of high cortisol and particularly high cortisol symptoms that women may need to watch out for. So I'm excited to dive into this because it may be helpful for you um, in figuring out if high cortisol is driving some of the symptoms you might be experiencing right now. Now there is one major caveat to everything I'm gonna say today, so I'll cover that towards the end of the video. But first, let's start out by covering the basics of what cortisol even is and what it is supposed to do in the body. Hi, I'm Kelsey Ale. I'm a certified functional nutritionist. I'm a restorative wellness practitioner, and I'm the founder of Audrey. We are a collective that helps women learn how to age well and love doing it. So if that sounds interesting or relevant to you, go ahead and subscribe to our channel and make sure you hit the bell to be notified when we post a new video. So cortisol is known as the stress hormone or the fight or flight hormone, and it's made by our adrenal glands. Cortisol is actually one of more than nine hormones the adrenals are responsible for making, which is a lot when you consider that our adrenal glands are each about the size of a walnut. Uh, but cortisol is probably the adrenal hormone we're all the most familiar with, and you can't live without it. Cortisol is important for so many functions in the body, and while it might be tempting to aim for a goal of no cortisol, that's not actually what you want. You would be dead. What we want is a healthy balance of cortisol and healthy cortisol patterns and fluctuations throughout the day. Cortisol is intimately tied to our sleep-wake cycle, and therefore it helps maintain our circadian rhythm. And when it's in balance, cortisol is its highest in the morning, and then it falls gradually to its lowest point around midnight, at which point it starts to slowly rise again to wake us up for the next day. Cortisol is related to our blood sugar levels. It actually helps keep our blood sugar from dropping too low, which can be a really bad thing. Uh, it also helps balance our mood and it even supports healthy sex hormone levels. So it's great when it's in balance, but when cortisol is elevated, that's one of the times it can start to cause problems for us. So let's just dive in and talk about our first symptom of high cortisol, which is accelerated aging. Chronically high cortisol accelerates aging in a couple of ways. First, high cortisol promotes inflammation in the body, which generates more ROSs or reactive oxygen species. Um, or in other words, it creates oxidative stress for our cells. So if you think about it from the perspective of antioxidants and how we all talk about how good those are for you, it's because antioxidants counteract these. They counteract the reactive oxygen species that would otherwise cause cellular breakdown. Chronically elevated cortisol can also cause the little end caps of our DNA, the telomeres or the telomeres, to shorten faster. And our telomeres are an indicator of our biological age, so the shorter they are, the older our body is. One study reported that women with the highest levels of perceived stress had telomeres shorter on average by the equivalent of at least one decade of additional aging compared to low stress women. So the more stressed you are, the older your body is. So feeling like you're older than your age or looking older than your age can be an indication of high cortisol levels. Another common symptom of elevated cortisol is GI issues, gut issues. Cortisol is again thought of as our body's fight or flight hormone because it prepares our body to deal with a threat by either muscling up and fighting it or getting ready to sprint away. So when we're dealing with fighting off an attacking lion or running away from it, our body has to prioritize those functions of running and moving and fueling our muscles over things like digestion and processing food. And our brain doesn't know the difference between an imagined stressor like a deadline and an actual real physical threat. So it reacts the same way to both scenarios. And when our digestion gets set aside, we don't digest our food well, and this can lead to cramping and bloating and constipation or diarrhea. High cortisol levels also put us at an increased risk of developing infections in the gut because it suppresses our immune function and also reduces our stomach acid production. And that second part can allow infectious microbes in. Our stomach acid is normally the first line of defense against pathogens, but or one of the first lines of defense, but when that barrier or guard wall is down because of stress, those pathogens have a chance to invade. And as a side note, uh, reduced stomach acid production is also why you might experience more 
heartburn when your cortisol and stress levels are high. Next, hormonal imbalances are a really common symptom of elevated cortisol in women, especially low hormone levels. And this is because, like we mentioned earlier, your adrenals are responsible for making cortisol and they are also responsible for sex hormone production to a certain extent, which is especially important to note for those of us who are wanting to transition through menopause more smoothly. We really need to start to focus on our adrenal health now to make that process go easier. Progesterone is actually one of the precursors to cortisol. So when cortisol levels increase, progesterone levels naturally decrease because the resources are going to make cortisol. And similarly with estrogen, elevated cortisol can also deplete estrogen levels because estrogens are farther down on the food chain or the production chain in the adrenals. And again, these resources that would be going to make those hormones are actually getting used to make cortisol, so they aren't going into making estrogen. So this can be one reason why when you're super stressed, it can throw off your period and also start to cause other symptoms of hormonal imbalance. Hair loss is another really common symptom of high cortisol levels. Telogen effluvium is a condition that affects primarily women, and it can either be caused by extreme stress or hormonal imbalances, which are a stressor in and of themselves. And remember, both high cortisol and hormonal imbalances can be linked, like we just talked about. Now this condition causes a disruption in the hair growth cycle that can look like sudden bursts of shedding with little to no apparent hair growth to make up for it. Androgenetic alopecia is another hair loss disorder that can occur as a result of elevated cortisol levels. Androgenetic alopecia is caused by high cortisol levels creating a hormonal imbalance that can lead to an, um, excess androgen hormones like testosterone, which also disrupt the hair's growth cycle. And androgenetic, there is a genetic predisposition to that particular hair loss condition. Hirsutism in women, on the other hand, is the growth of facial and body hair in typically male patterns. So sideburns, upper lip, chin, and even on the chest and around the areola. This is the other side of the hair loss coin, unwanted hair growth that can result from elevated cortisol. Again, because of how elevated cortisol impacts your other sex hormones. Skin changes. High cortisol can cause a breakdown in your skin barrier because of the inflammation that it causes. And this can look like drier skin, more susceptibility to skin infections, and the appearance of more fine lines and wrinkles because skin proteins like collagen are breaking down faster. And if you are already predisposed to inflammatory skin conditions like eczema, you probably notice them getting a little bit worse when you're stressed out, which can be caused by those elevated cortisol levels. Insomnia may be one of the more obvious symptoms of high cortisol because cortisol is something that we think of as like a stimulating hormone. But also cortisol works in opposition with melatonin, which is the hormone that helps your body fall asleep at night. So when cortisol levels are elevated, it drives down melatonin and it can make sleep more difficult, which can cause insomnia over time. Slow wound healing is another really common symptom of high cortisol, and this is just another example of how the body preferentially fuels cortisol production over non-essential functions like healing, because cortisol is directly associated with our immediate survival, while healing a cut might not feel as important to our body in those moments. So instead of allotting those resources to heal our tissues, uh, we put that into generating more energy for that fight or flight response. One study showed that women who were under more constant stress took up to 24% longer to heal from a small wound than women who are in the same socioeconomic demographic who weren't constantly stressed. So bruises that last longer or that happen easier and generally slow tissue healing is what that might look like in real life. Another common symptom of excess cortisol includes weight gain, especially in the face and the midsection, while the arms and the legs might remain more slender, and also fatty deposits between the shoulder blades, which can cause the appearance of a hump. Initially, high stress levels can suppress our appetite, but when cortisol becomes chronically high, it can end up increasing our appetite. Our brain starts to become desensitized to leptin, the satiety or the fullness hormone, and it can also increase our cravings for specifically sugary or fatty foods. Part of this weight gain process is cortisol's relationship to insulin resistance. Chronically high cortisol can elevate our blood sugar levels, 
uh, which can tire out our insulin receptors and cause insulin resistance. Usually insulin will pull sugar from the blood into places it can be used, but when it can't do its job properly, more glucose or blood sugar is available to be stored as fat, which is what can lead to weight gain. Poor sleep is another known contributing factor to weight gain, so the high cortisol-induced insomnia we just talked about could be another contributing factor to weight gain associated with high cortisol. Other symptoms of high cortisol might include decreased immune function, so you get sick easier, wide stretch marks that are purplish or reddish in color, reduced muscle mass, reduced bone density, and high blood pressure. So there are a lot of ways that having cortisol out of balance can really negatively affect us. So what causes high cortisol levels and what can we do about it? Well, we typically think about high cortisol levels going hand in hand with high stress levels, which is often true but there are also a few other lesser talked about factors that can lead to high cortisol levels in our body. So the official diagnosis of hypercortisolism, which is the medical term for high cortisol, is called Cushing's disease. And this disease can be caused either by a tumor on your pituitary gland, which is the gland in your brain that's responsible for stimulating cortisol production by the adrenals. So the little tumor and how it impacts the pituitary would put your adrenals into overdrive and cause an extreme overproduction of cortisol. You can also develop Cushing's disease due to taking medications that contain glucocorticoids. Glucocorticoids are naturally produced in the body by the adrenals and their hormones. Cortisol is considered a glucocorticoid. So when you're taking these medications and you are consuming or putting into your body in excess of what it normally needs on a regular basis, this can lead to hypercortisolism and the symptoms we just talked about. So cortisone shots, prednisone, and dexamethasone are all examples of common medications that contain glucocorticoids. And if you're taking them on a regular basis, they can cause symptoms of elevated cortisol. But you can also have elevated cortisol levels that aren't necessarily diagnosable, but are still causing some symptoms. And one of the main drivers of high cortisol is inflammation. And this can be caused by your diet, whether it's eating a refined and processed foods heavy diet or eating foods that you're sensitive to that cause an inflammatory reaction. Eating the wrong foods for your body can cause inflammation, which can lead to high cortisol levels. Inflammation can also be caused by GI or gut infections and by your microbiome being out of balance. It could be caused by over-exercising or inflammation could be caused by insomnia and poor sleep. So systemic inflammation impacts our brain and it changes how the brain signals the adrenals, which is why it can be the cause of elevated cortisol. And luckily, inflammation caused by lifestyle factors is one of the big things you have control over. By reducing dietary inflammation, by eating whole foods, lots of fiber and healthy proteins and fats, you can start to reduce that source of stress on your adrenals. If you're eating pretty clean and you still think that your diet may be a source of inflammation for you, opting to run a food sensitivity test can be a great idea. Create a balanced exercise and recover recovery program for yourself so you're getting time to rest and you're scheduling time to rest and restore between workouts. And make sure you're sleeping as well as you can. I know we just talked about how insomnia and poor sleep can both be a symptom and a cause of high cortisol. So start small by just making sure you're practicing good sleep hygiene and good habits in the evening to help set yourself up to start to get better sleep. And of course, addressing emotional stressors is also going to be key to lowering cortisol levels that are caused by high stress. So whatever that looks like for you, if it's talk therapy or mindfulness and meditation, make sure you do what you need to do to address any emotional and psychological stress that's potentially driving your cortisol levels up. Now, the caveat you've all been waiting for. The big catch to all of this, everything that we've just talked about today, is that many symptoms of elevated cortisol can also look almost exactly like symptoms of low cortisol. So fatigue, anxiety, hormonal imbalances, decreased immune function, craving sweet or fatty foods, blood sugar imbalance, and even hair loss are all also examples of symptoms of low cortisol. The same symptoms can occur even though it's for different reasons. 
So ultimately this can make it really hard to accurately determine if you have high cortisol levels or low cortisol levels just from looking at your symptoms alone. And cortisol and adrenal testing is gonna be one of your best options for finding solid answers if getting that data is really important to you. But before you worry about testing, I recommend that you make sure you're reducing systemic inflammation by eating an anti-inflammatory diet and eating to balance your blood sugar, balance your exercise routines so you're making time for recovery in between workouts, start an exercise routine if you don't already have one. Healthy amounts of exercise are actually a really great anti-inflammatory lifestyle practice. Um, meditate and practice mindfulness to reduce stress and do everything in your power to try to get a good night's sleep on a regular basis. I know it can be hard, but do what you can. So do these things first, and then if you're still not noticing a difference, it may be time to look into testing. But keep in mind that it may take several months of practicing these habits regularly to start to feel a difference in your cortisol levels. So after learning all of this, do you think you have elevated cortisol levels or do you think it's something else? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to check out the description below for more resources. We have our Better Aging Basics course that you can look into. We also have our Real Age quiz to help you assess how effective your current lifestyle habits are and to see how they might be impacting your skin and your aging process and your overall health. If you found this information helpful and you wanna learn more about building the right habits for aging well, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified when we post new videos. Also, if you could give us a like on this video, it helps out our channel so much. We really appreciate it. So give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.